The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 27th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. The easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't pick up the phone and call in, you can always send me an email. Send that one off to Steve at TFNN.com. But inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger Stead, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. The Dow's up 132 and the S&P's up 5. The NASDAQ 100 is off 48. The Russell's up 9. Semis are down 29. Trannies are up 53. Gold's off 27 bucks. Silver's down 19 cents. Lights Recruit is up buck 69. Natural Gas off 11 cents. 30-year Treasury's off 1 point and 8 ticks. Trade out at 1.3103. Lead the charge dollar-wise. The upside, you've got First Citizens Bank shares. Up 47%, 275 bucks. Mercado Libre up 10 bucks, about 1%. Domino's about 8 bucks, 2.5%. Simpress PLC is up 25%, nearly 8 bucks. Rally Automotive, 7 bucks, about 1% to the upside. The downside, Coinbase down about 6 bucks or 8%. American Tower down 5 bucks, 2%. Monolithic Power Systems up 6 bucks, 1%. Broadcom, 4 bucks, less than 1%. SBA Communications up 1.5%. That's 4 bucks to the downside. We got the first question. Let's answer the first question. That's the only question that we've got. Then we'll go on to today's take a look at the equity markets out here. This is from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Dan is looking at uh, BCLI. Uh, the question or the uh, goes on says FDA granted an adcom meeting one step closer to their ALS treatment reaching the market. Interested in long term overhead resistance. Well, Dan. You asked and you shall receive. Now, by long term, I'll give you the monthly. The brand new profile has formed this month. It is a bullish structured profile. So your support level there is down at 145. Your resistance area is 470. Now, that's way up there. 470. A close above the center of that profile, 181, is what you're looking for. Typically, if you get a close above the center of a bullish structured profile, price will make its way up to the top of that uh, profile. Now, we'll take a look at the other charts as well. The other resistance levels, if you're looking for more of an intermediate term time frame, that price found resistance this morning as a gap to the upside. So you had a nice gap above the top of the daily profile, but that ran right into the top of that weekly profile, and that number is 180. So if you get a close above 180 this week, and that is a bearish structured profile, that would be a bullish signal for you as well. Lastly, let's go switch over. Take a look at that white background chart. This is for Dan. And what we'll also see is we will see on the white background chart, especially on the monthly time frame, we will see how price has been contained right now by this red oscillator and change line. So you're really looking for both a close above that 280 or 181 level, but really it's going to be that red oscillator and change line that you'll need to see price close above to then suggest that it's going to make its way up to the 470 level out there. So, Dan, that's the uh, answer to your questions. I hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for writing in and, uh, and have a uh, magical Monday. Uh, let's go back to the uh, black background set of charts here. We'll stop by, start or stop 
I take a look at U.S. equity futures. So we'll move over to those charts. Um, yes, Mr. Bill, Esther had a very happy birthday. 95, it was a great celebration on uh, Friday, Saturday out there, and a uh, wonderful time. We should have eaten at a restaurant that gave, you know, 1% uh, off for every year that you're alive. We didn't do that. But, um, yeah, it was a great time, great weekend, and uh, she's uh, on, uh, on the 96 out there. So let's get back to the uh, charts out here. So thank you for asking. Much appreciated. Let's take a look at the four equity future contracts right now. We've got the ES Mini. That's in the upper left-hand side. That's got that to sell the D-point pattern. That was confirmed with that bearish engulfing key reversal bar that formed there on March the uh, 22nd. Right now, even though that's a bearish signal, price is trading nearly above the top. It's been trading right in resistance, 4,007 or at 4,005. In the case of the NQ, we're really just still trading with inside that swing point from the trading session of February the 2nd. You need to see a close above that. That would be 13068. But really, now you need to see a close above 13082 for this A to B equals CD pattern to come into play out here. Why? Because there's a Rhodes momentum indicator top, and that resistance level would be at 13082. The uh, Russell 2000, I'll go to the Dow afterwards, but the Russell 2000 already had a TD9 count pattern. Uh, that was at the support level of 1708. That pattern formed uh, back on March the 20th. And then on Friday, the weekend to see out there, generated a bullish hammer candle at its uh, support level, the bottom of its profile. That confirms a buy the D point pattern. It's got a TD, TD9 count bottom pattern. Do two bottom patterns make it stronger than uh, one? The answer is I don't know. I don't think so. But either way, you've got two strong patterns out here. Now, what price is doing is consolidating with inside its profile. So with regard to the Russell 2000, you're watching 1811. Price close above that says you've got a change in trend. And then to the downside, you're watching the low of that hammer candle. And that's going to be at 1703 even Steven. So bottom pattern there, bottom pattern. Well, now you got actually a topping pattern inside the NQ, topping pattern inside the ES. And the uh, Dow itself just has a... Uh, uh, a buy the D point pattern with price consolidating with inside its uh, profiles. So that's between the range of 31,951 all the way up to the 32,797 level. Expect the choppy market to continue. Why would Stevie say that? Well, if we take a look at what's going on market breadth, this is no different than it was on Friday, no different than it was on Thursday of last week, which is why we've got this choppy market. Here is your S&P 500. Now, granted, we have not taken a look at the ES mini charts other than the one daily that's got that sell the D point pattern, which makes sense that, okay, you got that pattern and we have a weekly bearish TAS market breadth. What do I mean by that? The daily time frame has 105 instruments trading above profile, 172 below profile. 105 are above resistance, 172 are below support. That gives us negative market breadth for that daily time frame. On a weekly basis, we're up at 69 versus 235. Man. That is a very negative. Now, if we take a look at the 240-minute time frame chart, the four-hour chart, there we've got positive market breadth with 201 above and 133 below. So we want to take a look at those. But where that choppy market is coming from is we have the daily and weekly in the uh, bearish TAS position out there with regard to its speed dials where we have bullish for the 60, the 240, the daily, and the weekly for the NQ. But it does have that Rhodes momentum indicator top. But this is why we have these choppy markets out there. Or at least I believe it's why we have these choppy markets. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Uh, we've got the uh, Dow trading up 153, S&P up 7, and a NASDAQ off 43. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. So we got a question inside the Tiger's Den. It's the only one that we've got in the queue, so I would love to hear from you. Steve at TFN.com or 877-927-6648. Of course, any ping inside our Tiger's Den. So this question coming in from Dano, and Dano's question is, um, uh, can you give your analysis on the Russell 2000s of poised to make some catch-up moves to the rest of the uh, market? So in that last break, remember, what we took a look at were the four equity future contracts. The ES has a top and the NQ has a top. The Dow's got a bottom, and the Russell's got a bottom. Just more to the, to speaks more to this consolidation, uh, choppy move that we've been having in the uh, marketplace out there. If we open up the daily time frame chart for the Russell 2000, I pose this question back to uh, Dano and everybody else inside the Tiger's Den, which is, what would price need to close above in order to signal that maybe it does want to play that catch-up move? And what we can see here is that especially, uh, well, we have had price that basically has been below its red, its green, its oscillator and change line, regardless of color, that's been below it ever since, for the most part, February the 7th. It's now February the 27th, so 20 calendar days out there. And we can see that uh, we've had two rallies recently, one on March 21st, one on uh, March 22nd. We've got today's rally, and we can see that where price has found resistance has been that red oscillator and change line. So, Dano, this is just a game of probabilities. The probability is that a close above that oscillator and change line, because price is going to go up and down, let's just use the center profile level at this stage, a close above 1767 would at least signal that price is going to make its way or should make its way to 1825. But, and that's the big but out there, if those topping patterns are still in place for the NQ and the ES Mini, hard to say that it's really going to be able to make that catch-up move. You know, it needs the ES and the NQ to take out their topping patterns out there. If you didn't write those numbers down on your pad of paper for the ES Mini, that would be a close above 4074. 4074. If we take a look at the NQ, that's 13082. You need those two closes, then we could say the Russell 2000 would want to make that move. Now, on the Russell 2000, so you've got that daily hammer candle. We talked about that during that last segment. Here, if we look at the five hour time frame chart, so that generated here's your TD9 count bottom. That was back on the 20th. Then down Friday, you had the Rhodes Mintum indicator. Now, on the five hour chart, you've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator, a TD9 count bottom. 
price targeting resistance up about 1781, then 1792, then 1799, and then 1802. So there's a bunch of battles for the Russell 2000 to deal with up top. On the uh, four-hour time frame chart, it suggests that it wants to take on those battles because it has a road momentum indicator bottom with price above profile. In the case of the two-hour chart out there, I don't have a, uh, a, a well, I've got a, a road momentum indicator bottom that was tested. That just shows us really sideways consolidation out there. But basically about the, well, I'll tell you the exact number out here. The key level that price would need to close above for the two-hour chart to get back to its merry ways from a bullish standpoint would be up at the 1808.20 level, 1808.20. On the intraday charts out here, you've got, uh, what do you really have? Just the 15-minute chart. It's got that road momentum indicator top with price getting back to support 1754.60. So on a real intraday basis out there, Dano, watch 1754.60 to the downside. A close below that, and the Russell is going to suggest lower price. But with regard to the signal, is Russell getting ready to take off to the top side? I think that the 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 three things you need to be paying attention to: what's the NQ story, what's the ES Mini story, and right now they're at a top story. And then the third thing is where is Russell 2000 trading in relationship? to that daily oscillator on change line. And you'll use right now the figure of about 1767 is the number to be paying attention to. So I hope that helps up, helps you out. Uh, today's really ramp up went up close to the top of the daily risk ranges and rolled over for what it's worth. Okay, cool, cool. Um, miss a nice top of railroad short setup. Uh, Okay, Steve, uh, this is for InnoVisual. That's the only other question I know of at the moment, so let's go to it. And InnoVisual is trying to take a look at Goldman Sachs. The question is, Steve, how does Goldman Sachs look as one of the banking leaders out here? Well, if we take a look at the uh, stock chart out here, what do we have? I do not have a bottom pattern that is in place on the daily time frame. I have price gapping up today, but just testing resistance. And resistance is the bottom of that profile. So the number you're watching today is 318.97. You know, if price can close above that level, let me make sure I give you the correct. 397. Shoot, where is it? Uh, what the heck? If it can close above 318.97, 318.97, or 318.57, if it can do that, then what we would likely be looking at here, you know, is a move up to the 327, 332 area. That's the daily bearish structure profile. But right now, it's um, no bottom sit. Well, I take that back. I take that back. Today's gap to the upside, as long as it holds, confirms road's momentum indicator bottom. So that's the first thing to know. Goldman Sachs. Assuming that the uh, gap to the upside holds, it does have a bottom. It's running a resistance. That's the bottom of that profile. If price can close above that, again, that says that price gets back to 327 to 332. On a weekly time frame, I see an A to B equals CD to the downside. What's missing is a bullish reversal candle. On a monthly time frame, we have Goldman Sachs that just consolidated with inside its profile. The support level is down at 291. We're trading at 318. And the resistance area is up at the 358.73-ish area. So the question was, is how does it look with regard to it being one of the banking leaders out here? Questionable at this stage here. Uh, but the daily is saying, I want to try to make a, a move higher. The question is, can it take out the resistance level, that bottom of the profile? Now, just for the heck of it, let's go check out Goldman Sachs. Let's see what kind of seasonal pattern Goldman Sachs typically has this time of year. Uh, however, that's not uh, taking place. Come on, give me a... Wow, that's weird. Okie dokie. Um, I don't know why it's not doing that. Lee. That's very weird. So I got a problem. Oh, no. Apple pops up. Goldman Sachs most certainly pop up here. There, no. Well, okay. Well, as much as I'd love to give you the uh, seasonal pattern, for Goldman Sachs, I can't. Let's try this, though. Steve's got a game plan B. What's just simply the XLF? So here's the XLF. Is that the XLF? That says Apple. What the heck? All right, folks. I just got some problems here. Um, got the NSA. It must be peeking into our system. So sorry about that. And I don't have the time to reset it. So that's where we're at with regard to um, Goldman Sachs. I hope that helps you out. 
uh, uh, you know. Uh, Dan writes in, how about PCT? So let's take a look at PCT and uh, get that uh, populated on our screen out here. We will skip the seasonal patterns because I don't know what's going on there. But PCT is uh, Pure Cycle Technologies, currently trading at about 629 as we speak. Um, we are trading above profile, Dan. Uh, let me see here. What was your question? How about PC? $50 call options at 11 bucks for both May and August expiration. Uh, someone likes the upside. That's two times the current price. Yeah, so uh, where price is likely headed to, what you do like is uh, Friday's close was above the top of that daily profile at 601. The price target to the upside is at 717. It's straight into that swing point from March 16th. That did volume of 3 million shares out there. So far today, you've 437,000 shares. But it does look like it wants to target 717. Dano, we'll take a look at this further when we get back from this break. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I post the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at ticker symbol PCT. This is for, um, I think it's staying inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And uh, so what we what we take a look at the weekly chart, there's a confirmed by the D point pattern that formed two weeks ago with that big old bullish engulfing candle price right now. Dan is consolidating with inside its daily profile and price above that oscillator and change line. So it's hinting at a move towards 701. So we got 701 on the weekly. We've got 717 on the uh, daily as price targets the upside. The uh, monthly chart has a TD9 count bottom pattern that is still in place out here. That bottom pattern, by the way, that formed the. Um, January 2022, really completed in February 2022, so for a full year. And that's been tested this month. 
and that has held thus far. So that's nothing more. Now, that volume, let's see what the volume test is. There was 19 million shares back in January of 2022. So far, you're at 100. Ooh, you're at 126 million this month. Hmm. Typically, when you test a swing point with volume, which this is most certainly doing on a monthly basis, Dan, typically price will get back down there and test it again. This doesn't tell us when. So I'd watch the, the daily and the weeklies right now. I'd watch that 701 to 717 area. That's where you'll get uh, some type of uh, release of information to you. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to PCT. Thank you so much for the request. Next request coming in from a guppy inside the Tiger's Den. Let's take a look at BBAI. That is the Big Bear AI Holdings. And the question is, can you please look at it? Yeah, looks to me like it's trying to go higher. But so far, can't get above the 200-day simple moving average. What level do you see that would indicate to you that it needs to get above in order to go higher? Well, on a daily time frame, that's very easy for me to answer for you, McGuppy, because we have a TD nine count bottom that formed in this instrument on March the 20th. Typically, when you do that, you go test resistance. Well, it was with inside its profile for the most part, and the resistance it's testing is that red oscillator and change line. Now, we can see how it's acted as resistance for the last four. Today would be the fifth trading session if it can't take it out. A close above it, and it would be, by the way, approximately $1.97. Let's call it two bucks. If price can close above two bucks, two buck chuck, then that ought to take us up to the 257 to 298 area. So with regard to what is it, you've got a 200-day simple moving average that's acting as resistance. On our charts, we've got an oscillator and change line that is acting as resistance. Two totally different calculations, not anything that is similar between those two, but that is your resistance area. If I take a look at the weekly time frame chart, well, guess what? We got the same kind of situation out there. Price has found resistance at its oscillator and change line. The weekly is at 196. So you got a weekly at 196. You've got a daily at 197. And the monthly, just not enough uh, time has traded. Uh, time has uh, passed uh, with regard to trading activity for us to generate any kind of signal whatsoever. So your specific question is, what do we need to see that would indicate that price is going to go higher? A close above the red oscillator and change line. Preferably on the daily time frame for two consecutive sessions. Then that ought to get you up to the next resistance area. And again, that's at 260 and above that is at 298. So I hope that helps you out, uh, McGuppy, with regard to ticker symbol BBAI. And uh, thank you very, very much for that request. Let me just check the email lines. See if there's anything that has come in. The answer is there is not. So what do we want to do next, folks? Let's go take a look at uh, Goldilocks. Gold trading lower today. Let's go see what it is doing. GC, we got the April contract that's still in play out here. What it was doing this morning, you'll see as these charts populate, is price was pulling back to test support. No topping pattern out there that I've got. If we open up the charts here, here's the daily time frame. Uh, we can see that uh, there's, you see a TD9 count pattern, but it's bar number seven that made the high. For, for my work, that does not qualify as a topping pattern out there. But nonetheless, what price has done is acted like it was a top and has pulled back and is tested. And so far, it has rejected screen oscillator and change line. So long as price remains above that, doesn't matter intraday, remains above it on a closing basis, it being 1947.60, conditions will be bullish. Now, because price is below the top of that profile of 1959.40, it's not as um, bullish as it could be. Um, so we'll call it more neutral. So neutral until we get another close back above 1959.40. Then it just simply changed to all out bullish. Now, it's possible that there is a retracement here. Now, there's a couple different A to B equals CD patterns, but there's certainly this one would qualify the retracement down here on March 22nd, that pullback. But if that's going to take place, you need to see a close above 2014.90. That's the high from March the 20th out there. So that's what the daily time frame chart is communicating to us with regard to gold. I don't have the uh, weekly and the monthly on the, this set of uh, charts out here, but we do have intraday time periods, five minute being one of them. Price pulling back and basically testing support at the bottom of its profile. And you've got breakout support not much further below at 1940.60. You've got a TD9 count pattern that is going to complete at 2 p.m. on the forward time frame chart. Now, I say that now. We still have over two hours in there. So if there were to be a gigantic rally and if price were to close above, this is by 2 p.m., 
close above 1976.30, that pattern would get negated. But right now, it doesn't look like that's in the offing. And on a four-hour basis, you're going to get gold with a TD nine-count bottom. That should then take price to the 1966 to 1978-ish area out there. Uh, no bottom pattern on the two-hour chart. You've got a TD nine count bottom on the 60. If we open up the 60 minute time frame chart, what we know here in order for gold to get its mojo, its price is going to have to close above that red oscillator and change line. So far, that has been hit, which it was during this half hour session, and it has acted as resistance. If price can close above 1959, we'll call it, that it says 1958.10 on my system, we'll call it 1959. Well, then that's only going to assure us of a rally up to the 1962 area. Why? Because at 1962.70 is where the sellers are hanging out on an hourly basis. But you take those folks out, and then you've got to move up to 1978.80 out there. And that's courtesy of that one hour time frame chart for Goldilocks. What more do we have? You know, the other intraday charts, meaning 10, 15, 30, they've got bottom patterns. Price has not been able to take out resistance, which would be up at the 1959 level. So we're back to 1959 um, as a key area to watch, which is the uh, level that you need to see price close back above on a daily time frame for the uh, gold contract to say, hey, I'm bullish out there. Now, that's completely different than what we have going on in silver. If we take a look at uh, silver, let's go over to the May contract for silver. What we're going to see there when the daily chart here populates is a TD nine count top. That formed on Friday. We open it up. You can see it. What should transpire from here is price should pull back and test that green oscillator and change line right around 22, 23. That number is going to change. What we're looking for there, just like we saw with gold, is for price to pull back, test that. If a test rejects it, that becomes the next potential entry point, and that would also be a bullish signal. And at this stage here, price would also be above the top of the uh, daily profile. So silver does look like it wants to pull back. Even in the case of a, a dollar that's moving lower, it's got that TD9 count top. But if price does decide to get bullish, well, it gets real bullish when price closes above really two levels, 2370, but more importantly, 2386. So that's what we see when we take a look at both uh, gold and high ho silver out there. I uh, really would call them uh, gold somewhat neutral to bearish, less price close above 1959. And silver is um, got a top, but it's above that green oscillator and chain. So I'm going to call this more neutral to bearish as well. So with regard to requests out there, I would love to hear from you folks. You can send me an email, steve at tfn.com, or inside the Tiger's Den, you can just uh, send me a ping, public or private. Steve Rhodes with TFN. They got a mixed bag out there. The Dow's up 182, S&P 10, NASDAQ 100 is off 54. The Russell down is up 11 bucks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got a couple of questions that are in. Uh, one from Aguppy inside the Tiger's Den. Aguppy is asking about a uh, wheat trade uh, that I did in the uh, newsletter back in December. And it was just asking questions about that. Aguppy, I'd have to – I can't really get back that easily to that contract, which is what you're asking about. You know, what was it that uh, would get me into that trade? So if it's okay with you um, – and even if it's not okay, because I'm going to do it because you can't answer me, I'm just simply going to take a look at the wheat charts with you and tell you what the wheat charts are showing right now. Now, I'm certain that some of this would have impacted that uh, trade as well. When I say some of this, what we're looking at here, beginning with the monthly time frame. So I'm just simply going to open up the monthly time frame for each of us to take a look at. What we can see here, and this is the May contract that we've got up on our screen, that this top with a, a TD9 count. Now, this is a monthly time frame that we're taking a look at. And right now, we are in bar number nine on a monthly basis. It is going to complete a TD9 count bottom, and it is doing it right here at breakout support at 681.75. So the monthly time frame is definitely telling us that we should be looking for a long-term trade with regard to wheat. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, what do we have out here? Well, back in December, just to kind of give it, give you a, a feel for the flavor, what we can see back here in December at least was uh, there was a TD9 count pattern that completed the week of December 16th. So I'm certain that that would have influenced that trade that you were talking about uh, inside of uh, December out there. And then what price did was it just simply got up during that time period and got up to its red oscillator and change line, consolidated with inside that profile for a while. But as we speak right now, on the weekly time frame, whereas we've got a nice topping or bottomy pattern on the monthly, we do not have the same thing on the uh, day on the uh, weekly time frame here. All that we have, well, we don't even have that. I have price coming back to a breakout level. We did see a close below that. So we've got a nice pattern on the monthly. We don't have confirmation on the weekly. What do we have on the daily? Turns out that on Friday, McGuppy, what uh, wheat did was it confirmed a roads momentum indicator bottom. It did it both with a uh, Three River Morning Star. It did it with a bullish engulfing candle. And now what we have is prices trading with inside its daily profile. That profile runs from a support level down at 677.40 all the way up to resistance at 712.50. If price can take out the 712.50 level, it should gravitate up to 784.50. That is the TD9 count breakdown area. So it would have been certainly the influencing factors, at least with regard to that December trade, would have been the patterns that were going on inside the uh, monthly and the weekly time frame, as well as obviously what was going on in the daily uh, back then. But here what we can see is you've got a nice bottoming pattern on the monthly and on the daily, price should target that 712.50. I do not know whether price will take that out, but if it does, we should continue to move higher. And we should see a further rally, by the way, inside of uh, wheat. Why? You've got a TD9 count pattern that lasted for about an hour. 
Uh, if no, I take that back. It didn't even last for a half hour on the 30-minute time frame chart. So that's a strong momentum move uh, in that chart to the upside out there. So I do like wheat, but you've got some battles up ahead. And that next battle would appear to be at about the 7.12.50 type area. So I hope that helps you out, uh, McGuppy, with regard to your question. And uh, thanks much for reaching out to me. Let's go to the next question. This is from Nancy inside the Tiger's Den. And Nancy wants to take a look at the NQs out here. Really, she wants to put up TQQQ. So we will do that first. Then we will do Nancy's. We'll give you a three for uh, and, and the reason is because I had already started it. And what I mean by that is, so let's first find the TQQQ, give her the data she might be looking for. And with regard to TQ, well, the question goes like this. Could you put up the TQQQ if you have time? We've got the time. You trade intraday with this one, looking for your take on resistance support for the next few days. So, again, that resistance support is not going to be coming from the TQQQ. It just isn't. It's trades for, you know, six and a half hours, not counting the post and pre-market out there where it's the NQs that you really want to pay attention to. So you're trading intraday out here. What we really need is to take a look at those NQ charts. So I'm going to do that. Sorry, just have to. If we take a look at the NQ charts here and you take a look at intraday and you're looking for signals, again, I don't know what time frame it is that you use, but if you did have a selected time frame, that's what I would be focused on. As we speak right now with regard to a 10-minute trade, you are in bar number nine of a TD9 count. As long as this bar closes below 12, 8, 35, 25, and it does that in the next four minutes out here, you will have a TD9 count bottom that will complete at uh, 12 noon, I'm sorry, four minutes. So we have 11.47, three minutes left. So it looks like we're gonna get a confirmed TD9 count bottom by 11 a.m. What should happen there is price should be able to get up to 12.860. That's the oscillator and change line. We must recognize you have a battle though because price is trading below profile support. That's at 12.835. It's not the most ideal trade, but it is a, a trade setup. And certainly if you were short, and you're using that type of a time frame out there, well, you'd be looking to really tighten up that uh, stop or simply take your profits. In the case of a 15-minute chart, no pattern, meaning pattern out there, nor do I have anything on a 30-minute. The 30-minute here, Nancy, suggests that if, in fact, that TD9 count bottom pattern fails on the 10-minute chart, we should see a move down to 12.805.50. But at 12.805.50 on a 30-minute basis, you could have, well, one, you'll have support or you should have support. And it could be forming a TD9 count bottom there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the NQs. The other time frames are a bit longer. Now, on a 60-minute basis, let me just open this up here. What do we have? We don't have anything, really. Um, at least nothing. No, I do have price below profile. This could be signaling to move to 12.705 and a quarter. So what you want to do here, here's what I would say, Nancy. I would be watching the NQ, and I'd be watching a 10-minute time frame chart, uh, and I would be taking my signals from that. Why? You've got a TD9 count. Maybe it's just a counter trend rally up to its red oscillator and change line, then it's back down. Maybe this TD9 count just simply fails immediately, in which case that would be telling you about lower price out there. As far as where's the extent of lower price today, well, the target – of lower price today would take you down to about the 12 729 level that is that daily oscillator unchanged line so mcguppy i hope that helped you out with regard to wheat nancy i hope this helps you out with regard to the tqqq series of things out here i guess just for the heck of it i can put up tqqq right here even though you're not necessarily the time frames i would use whoops oh it didn't work tqqq try it one more time and just see what pops up here for you. But, Ants, it's really about paying attention on an intraday basis to the futures contract. That's going to provide you with the best information to make your decisions about what you should do in TQQQ or SQQQ or any kind of Q out there. So now we're getting a TQQQ series charts populated here if you look at that 10 minute chart dance this is the perfect example of why you use the nqs and not the tqqq here i'd be looking at a 10 minute chart and i'd be definitely telling you this set up for 2539 now in fact it may be doing that but your signal is really going to be coming from that 10 minute nq total different set of patterns out there remember we talked about the 30 minute chart or even um some other time frame uh trade maybe forming a td9 count bottom might have been the four hour chart out there we don't have any such type uh, of a signal here on the 240 or the five hour chart so really it comes back to pay attention to the nqs out there and then go ahead and trade the tqqq and trade it off of that so i do hope that helps you out thank you so much for the request i see a request here for uh greg wants to take a look at the xlf so let's go up and take a look at the xlf let's do that here can we get that in x 
LF. Sorry about that, uh, as you can see, I have a problem typing uh, today. Uh, so if we take a look at the XLF, the question is, we look at XLF and USB. I've been playing the bounces on USB, but I have it in a weekly, monthly AB CD down. I'm not in right now, but would like your take. We get back to this break, we'll take a look at the XLF, which is confirming a road momentum indicator bottom right now, but price is dealing with resistance. It's oscillator and change line. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the XLF. This is for uh, Greg, who has been uh, trading this intraday. So, Greg, I mentioned to you, you had a nice uh, confirmation of a road momentum indicator bottom out here. That's because of the gap to the upside. As long as that gap remains in place out there, that's the signal. Now, what price is dealing with is the first level of resistance. That's the red oscillator and change line. That is currently printed at about 31.49. If price can overcome that, then the next area of resistance is going to be the bottom of its profile. That's at 31.86. I would say you really need to close above the high of uh, 3234 in order for this to give you a bullish message to suggest it wants to make that move to 3429 that's what i see when i take a look at the xlf for its daily time frame you're still trading inside its swing point on the weekly from back in october so there's nothing really to change that outlook you mentioned that you're also taking a look at uh, uh, usb out here if we take a look at it kind of a similar pattern uh, did gap to the upside 
Uh, that gap is still open. It does confirm erosion momentum indicator bottom, but price also dealing with resistance at 35.75. That's its oscillator and change line out there. It's red and falling. So you kind of have a neutral signal to the downside, a neutral bearish signal versus a neutral bullish signal out there. Price has held support at 34.17 out there. So that's what I see when I take a USB and uh, the XLF. The last question is uh, coming from Michael P. And Michael, thanks for your comments about our good friend uh, David White out there. And uh, you want to take a look at uh, ticker symbol BNTX. You are short on BNTX. We're going to change screens here. And the reason is because you're trading into a prior swing point. So let's go switch over to the black background screens. I believe this will give you the better information. Here what we can see on the daily time frame, Michael. Take a look at the swing point from back on the trading day of October the 20th. It did volume there of a million shares. You've now tested that swing point today and you've rejected it. But you're already at 1.1 million shares. 1.08 was the swing point. So this suggests to Stevie that price will get back down and at least test that 124.55 level. However, there's new profile inside the weekly time frame and i would say a close above 129.20 tells us that bt bntx wants to move higher so those are the numbers to watch out there folks stay tuned we've got great programming coming up next you got think or swim and uh larry pesavento tom o'brien i'll see you on terrific tuesday please have a magical and marvelous monday take care folks